Well, hey, y'all. Come on in. We're getting ready to start another episode of The Shed Life. So I want you folks to come in, pull up a seat, stay six feet back. Then you can take off your mask and grab beer, because beer does not taste good through a mask, I guarantee you that. So today, we have been, I have been busy in a one arm paper hanger. I am putting a fence around my yard. It's going to be a big one. I got a big yard. But I got to keep all these people out. I, can, I mean, I'm trying to hunker down. Social distance. And all that. So I've been working myself to the bone. I have cleared out, cleaned up, post set, and getting ready to put that fence in. Yes, I am. Now, I'm kind of tired, and I was getting ready to go. And me and the queen of my shed, we're going to go and out to eat and have a bite. But you can't now, because some of these son of a bitches will not wear a mask, will not social distance, and they are up shoulder to shoulder. So everything is shut down again. Well, it's a damn good thing that old Smokey never shuts down. So what are we going to be cooking today? Well, let me tell you. One of my favorite things about fall is all the fall festivals. All the food truck stuff. Mmm, you only get it once a year. But not this year. 2020 has killed the vibe. So I'm thinking I want some carny food. So we are going to do some corn dogs again. Because I like corn dogs who don't. And we're going to do a black and blue um, french fries. Double... Uh, double deep fried, and, you know, I don't know what else I'm going to fry up, because if you got the grease hot, you might as well deep fry it. Well, here we go. We got the charcoal fired up. It's getting, it's getting where it needs to be. All my tools and stuff is put away, and if you can look back there, you can see them posts on that fence. Now, I had let that grow up a good 30 foot off my property line because I didn't want people looking in here. I'm feeling a little bit exposed now. Look at that. Everything is wide open. That's one of them brush piles. There's another and another. Look at that. Cut all my bushes down. Man, if a zombie apocalypse happens now, I am screwed. They can walk right up in it. Yeah, buddy. We on high alert here for zombies and other things that come, could come walking in. Lord, you laughing now, but hell, it's 2020. Ain't no telling what's going to happen next. I'm telling you. So, you're wondering why I'm firing up the grill just to do dogs? Well, corn dogs taste, but you can do them on the stove, but, you know, it's just not that extra oomph that you want, that extra taste, that caramelization of that dog coming in. Now, we're using 100% uh, beef hot dogs, biggins. We got the stick, and we're getting the batter together. Or well, I say we, but it ain't me. It's my queen of my shit, and we're fixing to fire this sucker up. I cannot wait. Well, all right, now. Them coals are getting almost ready. Got the flame jumping up in there. And again, we're using lump charcoal because that's gives us the best taste. But we'll swing over here. There you see him. Old Smokey, he getting ready to get his lid raised. Listen for it. Y'all listen. Oh, and the angels did sing. So we're going to get uh, them coals laid down in there and get these dogs going. Well, we got them coals laid down on the in old Smokey going there. I did lay a little bit of applewood down. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but it sounds good. So uh, the queen of my shed's getting the batter together. Uh, we got that pesto, and I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. So, let's see. Coles, check. Smoky, check. Beer, check. <clears throat> there we have it. So, over here, I thought, what better and other for a fall activity than to have a little bit of a fire going. Look at there. 
Queen of my shed and I are gonna sit out here by the fire after we eat our corn dogs and them fries and just enjoy the fall weather. So, you boys want another beer, grab one, but you know, every now and then it would be helpful if you brought some of your own. Well, all right now, that smoke is thinned out a little bit. Remember, you don't want a, a rolling white, you want a thin smoke coming off. Let's have a look, see down here. Oh, that is perfect temperature for dogs. I guarantee that. Let's come over here to the James Bond grilling set. Open it up and watch all the shininess come through. Oh, look at all those gadgets. So now we're going to get the cleaner off her and just give her a little brush. Knock some of that last masterpiece off. Now, if you see, one of my greats has burning too, because we use Smokey a lot. Right there. Have a look. So every now and then, let's see how long I had this grill. I'm thinking about eight years, and we have changed out a couple parts here and there. And I'm never happy when I have to change a part out because like when I change the barrel. Well, I have to get that thing seasoned up again, and the food just don't taste as good. Well, all right, now. We got those dogs on the grill. We're getting some marks on them. Yeah, I had put on a sweatshirt because it's fall, y'all, and it's a little chilly. Uh, the queen of my shed is fixing up that last bit of the batter. Uh, I see that the trick dog has been let outside. She must have done something. So... Right now, we just got to let them dogs cook a little bit and get a little flavor to them. So that means it is time to have another beer. I like fall. Well, look at them dogs. They turned out perfect. I am telling you what. Now, these fries we got laid out. Uh... The queen of my shed, she cut them a couple days ago, and we've been soaking them, and we got them padded off, and they're going to be deep frying here in a little bit. I'll tell you how that's going to go. The oil is ready to go, and right there is the uh, batter for the hot dogs. I don't know what the uh, trick dog's barking at, but she's got something uh, treed out over there. Here's the queen of my shed. Look at there, guys. Yeah, she looks good in fall attire, doesn't she? Even got her mask on. Yeah, she got it. She got it down because everybody's about six foot back. But now we're putting it. We are. We are sticking the dogs. I'm telling you what, it cannot get any better than this. You ready? All right, guys. So, uh, the queen of my shed, the love of my life, the star of this show. Don't she look cute? But now she is going to tell you. What's in the batter right here for the corn dogs? The batter is just jiffy cornbread mix and buttermilk and an egg. That's it. So, uh, and that's good. A cup, so it's easy to take the stick and dip it and then let it drip off. All right. So tell us how we're going to do these french fries, darling. Well, the french fries, we're going to do a double fry the way they do in most restaurants. I cut them the other day, soaked them to get the starch off. We patted them dry, like you said. And then we will fry them at 300 degrees for about five or six minutes. And then we will take them out and let them drain and sit for a little bit. And after that, we'll put them back in at three, uh, about 400 probably for another five or six minutes. And that's when you actually brown them and crisp them. All right, so tell us what is, all, all this stuff is in this pesto. Okay, now, I just wanna say right now, it don't look, it, it doesn't look appetizing, <laughs> but I took a bite and oh my God, it is, I it, I don't like it, I'm right. telling you, it is, is wonderful. This is Kalamata olive pesto. So it is uh, literally Kalamata olives, uh, 10 cloves of garlic, um, a whole fistful and maybe a little more of Parmesan cheese and then some olive oil and mix it all together in a food processor. And this is what's gonna go on top of the French fries for those who want it. And then we will put blue cheese on top also, and that's black and blue french fries. Well, I'm telling you, there's enough garlic in there, by God. We don't have to worry about any vampires forever. Uh, I cannot get, I can't wait to get started. 
So the oil is going. There's a trick dog. She done got another stick. She's got a habit. She's like four or five a day. I got to beat her out of my uh, applewood, but she's still. She hits as many sticks as you do cigarettes, I think. It's about the same. Well, then she's in trouble. <laughs> All right. So we're going to while everything's heating up and getting ready to go, I'm going to grab another beer and we'll be back here just a bit. All right okay. now. Those potatoes are in. Now, you're looking, you're going, boy, they're not deep frying fast enough. But no, the first time, it's only 300 degrees. So, we're going to brown these up. And remember, we're going to put them on the uh, baking pan over there, let them drip off. Then we're going to go at it again at 400. And there's, there we go. Look at her with another stick. My God. I'm going to have to get her into Sticks Anonymous. I, oh. I just don't know if I can do that again or not. Well, all right now, that first batch of potatoes is about to come out. So you're gonna look at them and go, well, they're not golden brown, but no, not yet, because we've got to double deep fry them. So if you're a little bit pale, don't worry about it because that's what they're supposed to be. Look at that. So, what this is gonna ensure is that we'll have a crispy outside and a nice soft inside. It's like a french fry all the day. Like all <laughs> Caught her up by surprise. All right, so what I've done is I've taken that uh, olive pesto that was made a couple days ago, and we want to get it warm, so I got it in a nice little pan here just to heat it up. Never let coals go unused. And we've talked about that before. All right, let's get that down. I'm going to have a little lick taste. I'm telling you, it don't look good, but man, it is. All right. So let's look over here. Our second batch of potatoes are fixing to go off. There's our first batch here. And before we double deep fry them, we're going to do the dogs next and then uh, get that temperature up on that uh, grease. All right, one more stir. I'm telling you, I could probably eat this on most anything because I do like olives. All right, so the Queen of Shed does not like the olive pesto. There's no... So we're going to make up some fry sauce here. So i got some Miracle Whip. You can use mayonnaise also. Use one. a spoon. Don't put that in there. Hey, <laughs> Give me directions. Because you got to put ketchup in it too. So, this is going to be a quarter cup of mayo. <laughs> that works good there. And we'll put it in this cup here because I don't have a bowl out here. And then we're going to do a quarter cup of ketchup. Is that correct? Yep. Uh, that's not quite full. Now let's make sure we get all the ketchup. No, it's not that. It's just neither one of those is. You gotta if you use a quarter cup, you gotta do the whole quarter cup. Well, this is shed measurement, so yeah. All right, and then a quarter cup of uh, Worcestershire. No, just uh, like some uh, dashes of it. Just a dash like, of Worcestershire. Yeah, just like it. It comes out like that. So just one, one more. Uh, maybe three or four. Yeah. Two, three. Oh. Okay, then mix it up and we'll taste it and see. Let's see what it tastes like here. So where did you find this recipe at? Well, I think a lot of people use it, but actually I saw it on Pioneer Woman and Trisha Yearwood, so. Well, you can't go wrong with Trisha Yearwood or the Pioneer Woman. I That's mean, exactly right. That woman's the reason I wage and I've gained 15 pounds. All right, so there it is. It, it yep, looks good. Yep, that's what it looks like. That's what it's supposed to look like. Let's have a little taste. Okay. You want to taste? You want me to? No, you taste it. What are your hands? I hope they were clean. <laughs> Glad I'm the only one eating. What? Well, is it good? A, it's got a good taste, but I think it might need a little more Worcestershire, but I want you okay, to well, taste it first. Okay, well, hold on. All right, well, here, we're going to stop this, okay? Okay. We know how to make it now, so just adjust it to taste. Okay, guys. We have started on the corn dogs. Now look at them things. Oh, 
my God, don't they look good? I'm telling you right here, here comes one out of the deep fryer right now. Now the queen of my shed said that she's having a little bit of trouble keeping those things dumped. But we are going to baptize them in the uh, fire of the holy grease right here. I'm telling you what. Almost out of batter. Three more dogs to go. Now, the trick dog is licking her chops because she thinks she's going to get one. She might. I don't know. But she's going to have to leave my sticks alone. I guarantee she's you that right now. We got the bonfire going. I'm telling you what. You look back here. With all this goodness going on, you know it is like a fall festival. And I have been missing this since uh, 2020 has cut down all my fun false activities. There's, here comes the trick dog. Look at her. Come here, trick dog. Sit down. Look at her. Shake. Oh, she shakes with the wrong hand, but, you know, she's a dog. She don't know left from right. Okay, so when you first put them dogs in, you got to hold that stick and get the top of it uh, started up. Otherwise, they just sink to the bottom, and you won't get that uh, delicious grease flavor. It'll, it'll, no, it'll stick to the bottom there, and you won't be able to get it up without tearing it up. Well, we don't want to tear it up, tear I tell you what. No, <laughs> not this finish. Now, this finish looks good. Well, all right, we're down to the last corn dog right now. So when she brings them things out, let me get this over here. Oh, I don't want this one on there. I want a plate. Oh, I know. But when we, uh, we got a plate for the dog here because this corn dog did not turn out great. Well, it didn't. There wasn't a batter left. Yeah, we all ran out of batter. But when you bring those dogs out, we use a little bit of kosher salt just to put on top of them, just a little, not much. So now we are getting ready to go and double dip these french fries. And we got it up to 375 because as high as our little. Uh, if I was doing it, I would do 400. That's what I really should do. This will work. But, yeah. So we got that second batch of fries out. After they've been double deep fried, got a little more kosher salt on them. No, I'm putting garlic salt on them. Oh, a garlic salt on them now, I'm sorry. So I am going, while these things are still hot, I'm going to put them on my plate and get some of that pesto, some of that cheese will start melting. Hang on. So I got them fries where they're still good and hot and laid them out on my plate. Then I took some of that uh, olive pesto and put on it, and I got the blue cheese on so it'll melt down. Getting ready to dig in these corn dogs. We got, we got uh, one more batch of fries coming out. So y'all hold on and we will get this show rolling. So there we have it guys. We got the corn dogs. Look at that. Oh my goodness. We have the black and blue fries with the olive pesto. Of course we got a beer. And I'm fixing to dig in this so I'll get back with y'all later because I just can't wait to eat anymore. So we gave in and gave the trick dog another corn dog. She's a little pissed off because she don't have a stick to chew on. She keeps looking at me like, where's the stick? But I think she's happy with the corn dog. Well, there you have it. We got our fall festival food. And 2020, you can suck it because I don't need to be out on no street. I can be right here in the shed enjoying the, all the good food that you get during the fall festival stuff. So... That's going to conclude our episode of The Shed Life right now. I want everybody to give a big round of applause to the queen of my shed, love my life, for doing all this work. Again, she is the star of this show. I just flipped the meat. Until we meet again, you guys rock out your best life. Wear your mask. Stay safe. Later, Gator. <laughs>